There is a statement to be made this Sunday for Jacksonville, but they got to make this statement. It can't even be by choice. We'll talk about it in just a second here on Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jags, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining us here on Locked On Jaguars. I'm Tony Wiggins, your host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, your daily podcast, because it's your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen. And just reminding you, we are free on all platforms and on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Please like and subscribe. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com forward slash locked on NFL. Got some things to discuss today. Segment three, I'm going to work from front to back here or back to front. Segment three, talk about the boat, Blake Bortles, one of the most beloved Jaguars, even though on the field, you wouldn't think so. But I'll give my reasons why I think the fans really, really appreciate Blake, who officially retired from the National Football League yesterday. And uh, it comes just down to being every man and not making excuses. And we'll discuss him. And I'll tell you where I think he lies in the pantheon of the Jaguars quarterbacks throughout history. First two segments are going to be about the team that's on the field right now. The 2022 Jags have a huge game versus the Houston Texans this week. Yeah, I said it's big, even though the Texans haven't won a game yet. And in most power rankings that you look around in the National Football League, they're dead last or very close to the bottom. And the Jaguars are usually in the upper half of those uh, teams, considering that they lost a, a pretty competitive game to the Eagles and they lost on opening day. They have two good wins against the Colts and the Chargers. So they're hanging somewhere around, somewhere between 10 and 18, between uh, depending on who you talk to. Um, I'm going to tell you why this game is big. Because there's an opportunity to make a statement. And normally when you talk about opportunity, you speak of that word in the sense that, okay, you get a chance to show people that you are something that they don't think you are, right? Or that you're not capable of. In this situation, the opportunity is this. It's almost if you better win, because if you don't, they're going to tell you that you still who they thought you were. And I know that sort of sounds the same, but it's a little bit different. When the Jaguars beat the Chargers and the Colts in back-to-back weeks with a combined score of 62-10, to 10, folks were like, this Jacksonville team has really gotten better. They go up and play the Eagles, get off to a 14-0 lead, and then they lose the game, but they hit the ball back after playing catastrophically, in my opinion, with five turnovers by one player, and that is Trevor Lawrence, the Jaguars still had an opportunity to win the game at the end. So the thing is, people aren't really down on them because the Eagles are either number one and two in the minds of most people right now in terms of where they are in the National Football League. So here's the thing. You lose to the Eagles, you still might be okay because anybody could have lost that game to Philly in Philly, and Philly's undefeated. I made a tweet last week that somebody didn't understand. I said, I'm not mad at the national media for not picking the Jaguars to be the favorites because only one team, maybe two, maybe Kansas City or Buffalo would be favorite in Philadelphia this past weekend. So you always want to win games. You don't want moral victories. But here's the type of losses that you don't want. You cannot at this stage lose to the Houston Texans and give them life and be the first team that they beat this year when you are saying we are no longer in that category. We're separate. We, we have formed a line of demarcation and a clear, distinct difference from what we used to be. And what we used to be is what Houston is now, and they are the team at the bottom of all the power rankings. And more important than some rankings or some chart, they're at the bottom of the consciousness of the NFL. 
Right now, Houston is an afterthought. I mean, people, Deshaun Watson screwed up the organization. Uh, folks, they had to fire people. They fired a coach after one year. It's like a total rebuild. But they got all these draft picks for the future. They're the Oklahoma City Thunder. And not saying that the Thunder has all that drama, but they're the Oklahoma City Thunder of the National Football League. Where people are giving them credit for how many draft picks that they have coming up in the future and that they feel that they had to totally tank and rip this thing apart in order to be competitive and right now they're not very competitive and you're jacksonville and you're saying that used to be us that was us was used to be not anymore they absolutely cannot I'm not going to even go as far. Now, I know we always say there are no easy games in the NFL. None. Because in the pros, everybody, even like you can't rest players because those guys are going to play hard if you rest your player. You can still get hurt. You can still have, have injuries. A game, you can win the game. It can still cost you something. You can also barely beat this team and people start looking at you with the side eye. Like you ain't changed. It's like when I'm in a barbershop, right? And I don't do this very often unless somebody asks me to. You got a guy, they, they don't have any hair. You like kind of, you, you spray it on. They got products that you spray on. And you use products and you freeze them on and you put them under heat. Dude come in the barbershop looking like George Jefferson. Leave looking like young Michael Jackson. Just hair all over the place. <laughs> Until it rains. Or he takes a steamy shower. Or he goes to the gym and he starts sweating. He starts looking like one of those ducks that was in that oil spill out in the Gulf and can't even blink his eyes because all this black stuff. All That's the point. Are you going to get in the rain? Are you going to get in the shower? Are you going to sit in a sauna at the gym? And the jag and if you're the Jaguars, all the fake starts peeling off of you because you can't separate yourself from the lowly Houston Texans? That's why this game is so critical. I'm going to talk about the matchups in uh, specifically the matchups and things. I'm not going to do too much of that because we have a crossover coming up tomorrow with John Hickman and Cody Davis. And every time I say that I laugh because y'all know what's coming with those two jumping all over me. You know what was it? You know what? I, 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 I'll give him a mulligan. They didn't do it this year. It was, it was last year. That was the Titans. That was uh Kyler Roland from the Titans. They gave me a hard time. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a break, just a little bit of a break. But it's still going to be a lot, a lot of fun. They they apologized to me the other day. I am going to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars more than the matchups. We'll save that for Thursday. What I am going to mention about the Jaguars is this. They say it's not about who we're playing. It's about us. I've heard somebody say that before. I think it was Florida State's coach recently said it. and I And I really do agree with it. I agree that sometimes it's not really about who you're playing, but it's about you. We'll talk about what that means. We'll talk about who has to be the better version of, them, of themselves come this weekend in order for the Jaguars to win a, decis a, a decidedly clear game that they should win. We'll talk about it in just a second. And it's going to start with number 16. So I ain't going to sit here and act like we got to, sugarcoat it so we'll talk about that in just a second here on locked on jaguars when we get to segment two as you gear up for the fall you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders linkedin jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster the company my daughter works for found her as she was getting out of the united states army last year she had about a month of retainability left put her resume in logistics out there and they connected with her she had a job the day she got off active duty it's that easy all you got to do is create a job post in minutes on linkedin jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people then add your job and the purple hiring frame to your linkedin profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you like 
to interview. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. And you apply to me and I apply to you because we apply to each other here on locked on Jaguars every single day. And we thank you for making us your first listen. As always, I am Tony Wiggins, your host. The Houston Texans visit Jacksonville this weekend. Jax is two and two. I believe Houston's 0 three and one. The Jags have had not a not a terrible game yet. They had they've had terrible aspects of games that that cost them. They got up to a slow start and didn't convert a lot in week one against Washington. Came back, took the lead, ran out of steam, lost the game. They have had uh, they had a lead against the Eagles, lost it. Kept fighting, had a chance to win at the end, still lost it. Too many turnovers in game four. Too many big plays given away in the passing game in critical moments in game one. The other two games were perfect. 62 to 10, they outscored their two two opponents. Who has to do well this Sunday if the Jags get the type of win? Now, we'll take any win. We'll take a 13 to 10 win. We'll take a 14 to 13 win. But for the sake of the consciousness of the NFL and for the football self-esteem that the Jaguars have to feel about themselves. If you give me a want, it's like asking me, do I want a boy or a girl, right? I want healthy, but if you give me a choice, I might pick the gender that I want. Right? So you want to win, but you want, you really, really want to send a message and, and show that there's a clear line and there's a clear distinction and the difference between where you used to be as a franchise, which is, close to the bottom or on the bottom to the point where you're trying to make folks forget or, or, or think or understand that that is no longer who you are. I'd say a two touchdown win would do that. I'd say a clean game would do that. A dominant game would do that. A game without injuries and a game without Trevor Lawrence turnovers. Trevor Lawrence has to play better hit big passes, hit big throws, manage the team. He has to do the total opposite. He has to do a 180, okay? Trevor can't be the reason why folks are pointing that big finger and saying you're the reason that they didn't win, right? If you're on YouTube, you see my big old finger in the screen. Trevor has to be the guy who is the maestro. He's orchestrating. He's leading. He's navigating. You don't have to drive it like NASCAR, but you got to like drive it like a, a, a cruise ship. And you got to be the one focused while everybody else and bringing everybody together. He has to be the Peyton Manning, the quarterback, the guy that you can point to and say he led them to victory. I want to see Trayvon Walker have some more bang plays, disengaged from his blockers. Don't just almost get there but get there and make the play like we saw him do in week one. And not to say that he's played poorly since then, but he he went up against the stud this weekend in Lane Johnson this past weekend, and he was neutralized, right? And that's going to happen. That'll happen to the best players in the league. But now that you're playing Houston, this is where you need to be dominant. The bottom line is if you're a, a good team or you're a team that thinks you're good and that's a bad team, you got to bust them in the mouth and and shift them gums around before the fourth quarter even starts. You got to make them suckers put ice packs on their jaws because you don't punch them so much. I want to see the Jaguars stop the run because I know for a fact Houston is going to try to run the football. I said it earlier this week on a podcast, folks going to test your metal now. They're going to see what your leg's about, see if you got any hind parts, and you need to stand tall and be able to stop that run if you're Jacksonville. I want those corners to not give up that untimely big play in the passing game. It's a lot to ask for, but you just want a clean game. You want a clean, aggressive game. You want them to get off to a good start, get to their sub packages, be able to play with the lead, 
force the tempo on Houston and don't let Houston hang around. I want the a clear distinction between Trevor Lawrence and that Mills kid that everybody keeps saying, whoa, did Houston really get the best quarterback in last year's draft? Uh, and didn't. And I wanted to show, I want Trevor Lawrence to show that this dude ain't even in my league. Y'all better be looking in the draft to get somebody. You better try to get C.J. Stroud because that ain't it. Because if you can't separate from a dude that was chosen, you know, in the sixth round of the draft, you know, it ain't like you the second coming to Tom Brady, right? Please do not let Brandon Cooks get loose. We've seen enough of that over the, few, the last few years. And just like the Jaguars have the Colts number, the Texans have had the Jaguars number. Let's see if we can overcome the quote unquote superstition or overcome all of that stuff. That's the main thing I want to see. And a good, clean game where guys know their responsibilities. They tackle well in open space. They get off the field on third down. They convert in the red zone. And if they have any chance to kick some field goals, that they show that they can make field goals because at some point they're going to need them. I expect, uh, I'm not going to give you a score yet, but I expect the Jaguars to win the game easily. And if they don't, we'll be having uh, another one of those podcasts, the ones that I don't like having. Blake Bortles, fan favorite. <laughs> it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. I've never, ever seen, I've never seen a guy who wasn't good be liked so much. I mean, I've never seen it. I, I don't think I have. I don't think I've ever seen Gardner Minshew, but see, that's the difference because he was a backup and he had the whole Uncle Rico thing working. But I've never seen a quarterback be a bust and be as well-liked by the team that he was a bust for. And I think Blake was a bust. I don't care what you say. I, I'm going to explain all of this and why. I believe what I believe about Blake and I'll do it while we're actually going to, you know, give him his flowers and pay tribute to him because I do think that there's some stuff that we need to go over. So we'll do that in segment three here on Locked on Jaguars. I got to tell you about betonline.net because it's your number one source for football betting info this season. Look, pay attention to it. Look at the injury reports. Go in there and look at everything and all the information that they have because it seems like every time I fall short in doing that because I don't pay attention before kickoff, I end up getting bit in the butt like Jazz Reynolds playing last week for Detroit. Had, all, had I known that, I would have made me some money. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games, events, including MLB, MMA, golf, and boxing. And I heard the Errol Spence, uh, Bud Crawford fight is going to happen in November. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more because Bet Online is where the game starts. Start here with us on Locked on Jaguars, and I absolutely appreciate you doing that and making us your first listen. Check out the NFL Key Predictions. Thanks again for making us your first listen every day. Make sure you check out NFL Key Predictions every Friday on Locked on NFL. Locked On's local experts give you the inside scoop on the five biggest games of the NFL weekend, including Sunday and Monday night football, plus betting advice from the field's leading experts bet online. Follow NFL Key Predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. My man Blake Bortles officially announced his retirement, and I'll tell you what I feel about Blake and how I always felt about Blake, and, I, and I'll keep it 100 and honest with you. For most of Blake's tenure here, this is when I was on radio, I was lo on local radio, the flagship station of the Jags. And I don't want people pulling receipts because the emotional part of me would love to say, dang, man, he was, he was a better player than people gave him credit for. And, um, all of these things because he's retired. No, I'm not going to do that. 
because if somebody wants to pull receipts, they can hear me every week saying Blake is terrible. And then I don't want to do it anyway because I'd be lying if I didn't say he wasn't good. Now, I know his stats will say his touchdowns. I think he had over 105 touchdowns and 84 picks. He had about 35 of those touchdowns in one year, and that's the year before they actually went to the playoffs. But I can never give a guy enough credit when he's the weak link on the team and about 30 people on the team off the record privately used to say it, we ain't got no chance to win because of him. The only way we're going to win is we play defense. So I never heard those things about David Garrard. In fact, it was the other way around. David was never looked at as the weak link on the team. He just looked at they weren't good enough, and he wasn't good enough. But those players believed that they could win with Garrard. And they went on a playoff run and lost to New England. Um, I always said this about Blake, though. He never let the criticism and the pressure and the negative headlines and the whispers, he never let it affect how he carried himself. He never let it affect him to the point where he blew up and got mad at the people in the media like me that were saying that he was awful. He never let it affect the way he had played in the game. He didn't get worse when people were saying that. Every now and then, he'd up and do something, you'd go, wow. That's because the word I used to describe him is a gamer. And there's another kid who played quarterback back in the day, a man, rather, he was retired now. I used to say that about Cordell Stewart. When nobody, nobody thought he was good enough to be their quarterback, Pittsburgh, Baltimore. And as soon as you would overly criticize him and you hear all these whispers, he would go out and actually have a good game. And it's because he was a gamer. And nobody and nothing that anyone said could change the way that they were going to perform on the field. Now, the way they could perform on the field was average at best. But I think the thing that folks like about him is he never, ever lost class in his character. No matter how much pressure and no matter how bad things seem to be. And then there's this other thing. Hanging out at the beach, drinking beers, dating pretty girls. I think a lot of people resonate with that because it reminds them of one of him. I've always heard people say, I'd love to have a drink with Blake Bortles. I'd love to hang out with Blake Bortles. And I think that him being authentic and not rude to people, and not emotional and not reacting the way a lot of other players have. I think that resonates with people because I I think people really rooted for him to be good. And I don't think people think he dogged it. I think people believe he did the absolute best he could, did not make excuses, and never, ever, ever lost character. That's why he's beloved so much. But I will say I've watched football for 53, 49 years. I have never in my life seen or heard tell of a guy like Blake Bortles being so beloved by his fan base. I can't think of anybody else that didn't pan out. That was probably the reason they overpaid and 2018 things started going downhill and they didn't address they didn't look at Patrick Mahomes when they had a chance to draft him it's because they committed so much money to Blake they ain't look at Deshaun Watson well, you know y'all know what I'm saying it was a long time ago before you know but there were a lot of players on that team that did not believe in five A lot. I don't even remember them feeling that way about Leftwich. And that's back in the day when I used to hang out with a lot of those dudes. That's around the time I was doing media work when it was college football. I wasn't doing NFL stuff. Hanging around clubs, promoting stuff with people. And you never heard them talk about Leftwich like that. I've, just, I've never, ever, ever, ever seen anything like it. The love and the affection and the outpouring for a dude that was a first round guy who didn't make it. And I think it's different from Blaine Gabbert, because 
Blaine, although he was more talented passer than Blake, Blaine always looked like he was scared and like things were too big for him. Blake never looked like the moment was too big for him. As a matter of fact, I was talking to somebody. I think I did a podcast last week, and I said uh, it was on another podcast. I was a guest. Blake, they showed him in slow motion running, and he saw a dude coming, and Blake ran him over and knocked him over and was laughing. So, yeah, I think uh, I think that there's a, a, a very unique relationship with Blake Bortles and the Jaguar fans base, and it's something like I've never seen in my life, and I can't name another situation where it's like this. I cannot. I, I just can't. I can't name one. I can't remember one with a guy who was, who had his level of success or had his level of non-success in one of the worst periods of the Jaguars of any football organization, and he's still so beloved. But good for him and good for the Jaguars fan base. You guys, make sure you stick around and check out the Peacock and Williamson NFL show because it's everywhere. Everywhere you get your podcast, you'll enjoy it, man, because Brian Peacock is the cold-hearted truth along with Matt Williamson, who is a former NFL scout, and they give you information that you don't get everywhere in a manner that is very, very unique. So make sure you like that, subscribe, and check it out as well. Tune in. Tomorrow for a crossover with Locked On Texans here as we head to the Sunday game and match up here at home against the Houston Texans. Until then, you guys take care of each other, and I'll talk to you later.